Hey there, I'm Julie. I'm a printmaker, a painter, and a collage artist living and working outside of Boston. And if you've ever taken a class with me and there were stencils on the supply list, chances are good that there were also cosmetic wench sponges on the supply list as well. Now, this whole thing started because back in maybe 2009-ish, 2010, when I started using stencils, I didn't have any stencil brushes. I sort of couldn't figure it out and I was looking around for what to use. At the time, it was very popular to use, um, there were these kind of like spongy pads that people used with ink pads. And I was trying to figure out what I could do. And in my medicine cabinet, I had cosmetic wedge sponges. And so I began using them. And when I taught for the crafters workshop at the Craft and Hobby Association show, I started teaching people how to use the cosmetic wedge sponges. And then that just became a thing, right? These are an easy applicator. You can cut them down when they dry up and you want to, you know, change colors, whatever else. Um, I've heard people use sea sponges. They Some people do use the fancy foam applicators and I guess they wash them or they just buy new ones. But these have been good to me. And today I'm gonna show you the basics of how I like to use them. two colors of acrylic paint. I do tend to like to use a slightly heavier body paint when I'm stenciling with a cosmetic wedge sponge. You can use your fluid acrylics. I just find that sometimes I pounce too hard and I get a little more roll under than I would like. Um, at any given time, I have a bunch of these. These are cosmetic wedge sponges that the paint has dried and hardened in them. And when I want them to be a new sponge, I simply cut off the end that has the paint, and now it's a nice soft sponge. You don't want to use the dried paint end just because it's so hard and unforgiving and just doesn't make for a nice print. So this stencil is called Pebble Grid, and I'm working on a piece of sulfite paper, but you could work on anything you'd like. And basically, I'm going to dip my cosmetic wedge sponge in. Now, this is too much paint. This is too much paint. This is going to just like roll all under. So I like to basically dab off. So you'll notice I'm coming down the palette paper and there's getting less and less and less paint on here until I have a very thin amount on here. And then I'm going to dab lightly. The harder you push, the more roll under you'll get. And so roll under is when it goes outside of the edges. So if you want, a, and you, you maybe you will want that, but if you want a clean stenciled look, then you want to dab lightly up and down lightly up and down and not push too hard and keep reloading and then tapping out. So I'm, this is one of the reasons I like to work on palette paper is because I'm constantly doing this kind of tapping out so that there's less paint on the sponge so it's not all gloopy. That's a very technical term there. Uh, and you'll notice I have one hand that's staying, keeping the stencil down in place while I'm working. Now, if you want to change colors completely, you grab a new sponge. So if I want to change colors completely and not have the two colors mixed together, you can see that I've changed sponges and now I'm using the blue with a separate sponge. Of course, there are a million subtleties here that you can go through. You can tape the stencil down so that it doesn't move around. You could use a spray adhesive to keep it in place. Um, some people like to rub the sponge like this. That's not my favorite because I feel like you do get under the edges that way, but I do think that there isn't a right and a wrong. It's really up to you. And what I teach in all my videos and all my classes is the techniques that work for me. Now let's say you're ready to start mixing. There are two different ways that you can approach it when you're working with a cosmetic sponge. The first way is you can basically layer. So I go to an area where I already have color and I start to layer in, right? And if it's wet, I might get a little bit more of a mix than simply a layer. Um, you can see maybe I have a little bit of pink that got onto my sponge. Uh, you know, and I can do the same thing because this blue is very transparent and this pink is very opaque. So the pink is gonna kind of sit on top of that. Another thing that I'll do sometimes is I'll just go ahead and take my two colors and put them both on the sponge. So there is some pink, here is some blue. Just sort of tap it out. 
And now I have this kind of purpley gray that I'm gonna get, and sometimes a little bit on one side of the sponge, a little bit on the other. I would say the pink is stronger than the blue in this case. But you can get quite a nice result stenciling like this. It is slightly time consuming. Of all the different stenciling methods that I use, this is the one that takes probably the most time just because you have to individually go to each hole. But let's just take a peek at what we have. And you can see you get a really beautiful result with almost no bleed under, which I really like. I love the places where the colors blend you know, and where it just, it looks so painterly, which I'm very, very attracted to. And now I'll let these two sponges dry out. And when they're dry, I'll just cut off those tips. One last note, if you want more intense color, it's better to come in with a second layer than to try to like push harder or put something in earlier. I would always wait a minute, let it dry a little bit, and then come back again to give that extra layer. Let it dry, come back again, give it another layer. That's going to give you the intensity that you're looking for. You can see the difference right there. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, sign up for my weekly newsletter, and of course I hope you'll take a class from me. You can find all of my online classes at balzerdesigns.com and my in-person classes at juliebalzer.com.